Welcome to Unit 2. We are about to write some real, actual PHP. And um, we're going to spend some time going over some of the basics, variables and loops and things like that. And it's not the sexy stuff, but you need to understand it. If you already know the basics and you just want to learn how to code a real project, feel free to skip on to Unit 3. That's fine. But if you don't know this stuff, I really encourage you to take the time to go through this. Now, I'm going to warn you, you're going to go through this and some of this is going to make sense and some of it isn't. And that's okay. Nobody gets everything right the first time. Nobody remembers all the names and how they work. And that's why we're not going to dwell on it. We're going to learn it. We're going to get the gist of it so that we can go and we can put it right into practice. And it's sort of like I was saying in the introduction, like we, we try to learn something like Spanish and we get frustrated because we spend all this time learning vocabulary and almost nobody who studies Spanish on their own gets to the point of full sentences and full conversations. So we're going we're gonna to learn some of the basic vocabulary, but in Unit 3, we're going to get right into just speaking fluent PHP. So without further ado, we are going to make sure that XAMPP is running and I'm going to right click on the smart scan folder and click open with Atom. If you don't have that option, you can go into the settings menu in uh, Atom and there's a thing to add it to the context menu. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and if you'll notice, you have all of your project in one spot right here on the right so we can get to all the folders and all that kind of stuff so what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and I'm going to make a new file and I'm gonna call it lesson1.php now if you wanna write PHP there are two things that need to happen on this file one is it needs to have a .php extension you can't write PHP inside a .js file or inside an HTML file. You need to write it inside a .php file. And the second thing is you need to open your PHP tags to tell the server that you are writing PHP. And so the way you do that is you do the less than symbol, the question mark, and then type in PHP. Now if you're using Atom like me, when you hit enter, it's immediately going to put another symbol to the right which is to tell it that you're you're done writing PHP. And one of the neat things about PHP is that you can break in and out of HTML. So I could come in here and say HTML hello world. And then if I were to come over here to lesson one dot PHP, I get hello world. But then right here on that same file, I can write all kinds of complicated code. So you can go HTML, PHP, HTML, PHP, throw in some JavaScript, and you can jump from one language to another. So the thing we're going to study in this lesson is a very little bit of variables. And if you don't know what a variable does, a variable stores information so that you can use it later. And so what we're going to do is let's say that we're going to create a variable. To do that, you put a dollar sign and then we're going to give it a name and we're going to say first underscore name and I'm just going to make it big so you can kind of tell what it is and then my first name is Dan so I'm going to do equals Dan and then at the end of pretty much any line of PHP you're going to put a semicolon and the semicolon tells it that you're finished making whatever statement that you are making and so we'll learn a few exceptions to that but for the most part, when your code doesn't run, it's because you forgot a semicolon or something like that. So um, basically what we've done here is we have named our first variable and we've told PHP what that variable is equal to. And in this case, it's Dan. Now, if I were to save this and refresh the page, nothing changes because all I did here was told PHP, hey, I have a variable. The variable is called first name and I'm storing Dan in that variable. So if I want to see that come up on the screen, then what I would do is type in echo, which would tell it to put it on the screen, first name, okay? And now if I save this and I come in here and I refresh the page, I have hello world and then I have Dan. 
because uh, first name is equal to Dan. Now notice it didn't print echo first name. It printed echo Dan because it's giving me the, the contents of this variable. So if I were to come down here and um, just, I'll, I'll get a little bit advanced. If I were to come down here and instead of world, I were to come down here, let's say I delete this world here and I'm just gonna space this out to make it easier to see. And I would drop this echo first name in here. I would go PHP, echo first name, and PHP. And then, so you'll see, I opened up this H1 tag and then I did my hello and there's a space I think that might not show up, we'll have to work on that. Um, and then I just said echo first name and did the exclamation point. Now I have hello Dan um, right there as one statement. So I've gone from HTML to PHP right inside of this tag. So that's very cool and that gives you an idea of the power of PHP, just being able to mix this stuff however you want. Now there's a couple of other things that we're gonna store in variables and we're gonna cover them in this lesson. And so a few other things you might do is you might store a number. And so if I do lotto equals 153, so let's say they were the lotto numbers um, and I can just do echo lotto like this. So now, um, my screen is not always refreshing. So anyway, so now lotto is 153. Now you'll notice that I did not put that in there as in quotes. And the reason because is because it's a number. And because it's a number, you just don't need to put quotes. And so um, I didn't. So another thing you can do with these variables is you can actually do math inside of these variables. So if I were to come in here and say, it equals 153 plus five. Then when I refresh the page, my refresh is not, I'm getting 158. So basically what it did is it took 153 plus five and stored that in lotto. And now as many times as I echo out lotto, I would get 158. And you can also do it with, um, with, um, you know, decimal places, what they call floats. So now I, it's 158.25. So you can store what these are called are strings, which is basically arbitrary text. It could be a mix. I could have Dan123 in here. That would be fine. Um, I can have spaces um, like that. You know, I can do whatever um, in there. So I can put arbitrary text in there. I can store numbers in there. Now, the last thing we're going to learn in this one is you can also store what they call a boolean and we're going to get into this a little bit more later but i'm just going to kind of introduce the context of it you can store a boolean and basically a boolean is true or false so i could say eagles win equals true and then i could say cowboys uh cowboys win equals false, obviously. And then what I could do is this um, thing that's built into PHP and I can say var dump, and we'll get into some fancier ways to do this later, but I can do var dump eagles win, and then I can come in here and do var dump cowboys win. And so what'll happen here and is putting it in here, true and false. So um, basically, you'll notice that I didn't put this in quotes because Boolean is something special. It's either true or it's false. Kind of like you're either pregnant or you're not. You're not kind of pregnant. Um, you're either dead or alive. You're not kind of alive. Um, so the idea is that basically these things have to be either true or false and... Um, that is a Boolean. So we've learned about strings. We've learned about what these are called integers, whole numbers, floats, which have decimal points and Booleans. And you can store all of these things in variables to make your project more powerful.